hoshate magor ria masoshti dele or ria magosikele hoshati arama gosakele hoshi arama just pray in tongues with me or rama gosaki arama gosaki arama stoshti dele or rama gosaki arama gosaki arama gode dele or ria magosaki la bagoshata la magoshti dele soki arama gode dele or ria magosaki la mashate mogala magide soki arama gode dele Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. This morning, I want to ask you a very important question that you must answer from the depth of your heart. It's a very important question that you must answer very honestly. Amen. You know, with you and God, there has to be transparency. You know, when the world talks about transparency, it's because they don't want you to keep any secrets from them because they want to know your secrets. <laughs> but in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we talk about transparency, we're talking about transference. To the extent that you are transparent with God, there is the transference of power. To the extent that you are transparent with God, there is the transference of power. There is the transference of grace. And if you want God to manifest himself in your life, you should not hold back anything. And to the extent that you're not holding back anything, that's your release. That's your freedom. That's why you don't even hold back your sin. Don't be too ashamed to tell God your sinful habits because when you tell him, that's when the deliverance comes. Don't hold back. No secrets before God. No problems before God. To the extent that you are transparent before God, then that's the transference of power. To the extent that you tell God everything, it's the extent of the manifestation of release. Holding back nothing. I believe that this is for somebody this morning. Holding back nothing. To surrender to God is your victory. Your victory lies in your total surrender unto God. Your total surrender to God is your guarantee of victory. And your persistence in Him. That you are not a visitor. That you are not just occasionally visiting. You are not just ringing up God when you have an urgent request. To the extent that you are persistent, to the extent that you are faithful, a faithful man abounds with blessings. Your faithfulness speaks loudly in the realm of the Spirit. To the angels and to the devils. Amen. The question that I want to ask you this morning, and it's very important that you answer from the depth of your heart, from the transparency of your soul, is what does Jesus mean for you? What does Jesus mean for you? Who is he to you? Who is Jesus to you? What does Jesus mean for you? Who is he to you? Is he just a religious figure? Is he just the second person of the Trinity? Is he just somebody that you have just like an, a vague idea? Is he close to you or is he distant? Is he just your God or is he your Lord? Is he just your friend or is he your kinsman redeemer? Is he so familiar to you that you can just, you know, just drive past and drop by just for your convenience? Or is he the precious rose of Sharon? The lily of the valley, so rare and so sweet. I believe that there is a price that you have to pay for that transference of power. Power does not come cheap and blessings do not come cheap. Nothing happens in your life without you yourself be involved. 
And if it's so easy to pray for everybody's healing, then we can just pray here and empty all the hospitals. There is a price to pay. The woman with the 12 years of blood, he, she was not healed. She wasn't healed until she pressed to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. I'm sure she had all the good intention and she had been pressing and pressing and pressing, but she wasn't healed. The healing did not manifest until she touched the hem of his garment. And when you read the book of Acts, there was the beggar there. There was the beggar there that, that John and Peter could see. There was the beggar there at the gate of the temple, beautiful, that John and Peter could see. I mean, did Jesus go to the temple? Of course he did. So how come there was still that blind man? Not blind, sorry, the lame. How come there was still that lame man there? Why hasn't Jesus, why hadn't Jesus healed him? The Bible says Jesus healed all that came to him. Jesus healed all that came to him. So obviously that lame beggar did not go to Jesus. Or he did not make the effort to go to Jesus. Or he did not have that effort. He did not make that effort in his heart to go to Jesus. We have to understand that God has his ways. Otherwise, we'll be too presumptuous. And the devil loves you to be presumptuous because that's when he can hurt you. That's when he can disappoint you. That's when he can discourage you. And you think that I've believed, I've prayed, and how come I haven't seen it? We need to know the ways of God. The Bible talks about that God revealed his way unto Moses. The Israelites, they saw the acts of God. They saw the acts of God. But God revealed his way to Moses. And if you look at the way of Moses, if you look at the life of Moses, if you look at the meekness of Moses, that's what God is after. Because his revelation is very expensive. The revelation of Jesus is very expensive. And the God who told you not to cast your pearls before the swine, he would not cast his pearls before the swine. So it's very important that we are not casual visitors when it comes to the things of God. It's very important that we press. The Bible says the violent take it by faith. Ever since the time of John, the kingdom of God has been violently advancing. The kingdom of God bringing healing, bringing health, bringing salvation. Amen. Bringing the grace of God, bringing well-being to God. The kingdom of God has been violently, violently, aggressively advancing. But you have to meet him. You have to meet him. You have to meet him. And the violent, those that are proactive, those that are aggressive, those that mean business with God, take it by force. That means in spite of all the problems, in spite of all the challenges against you, in spite of what the devil is bringing against you in your faith walk, you must take it by force. Thank you, Jesus. There has to be that spiritual aggression in you for life to succeed for you. There has to be that spiritual aggression in you for all the bondages to fall off your life. For drugs to leave you, for alcohol to leave you, for laziness to leave you, for selfishness to leave you, for selfish ambition to leave you. There has to be a shaking. There has to be a shaking. There has to be a shaking. The violent take it by force. For the things of heaven are not cheap. They are more expensive than anything that money can buy. And God sees the intensity in your heart, the seriousness in your heart, how desperate you are for God. The woman with the 12 years sickness, 12 years of sickness, she had been bleeding for 12 years. She could be stoned if she were caught. 
It was against the Levitical law for her to be seen in the crowd. She could have been stoned. But yet she came. And she made her way. She forced her way. She pressed in spite of the crowd. There were many people trying to touch Jesus. The disciples said, everyone is trying to touch you. What do you think? What do you mean? Who touched me? It's the touch of faith. It's the touch of determination. It's the touch of faith. It's the touch of determination. Amen. Prayer. Prayer is not just one sentence. Prayer is not just one minute. Prayer is not just one ounce. It's not just one hour. Prayer is the aggression of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. It is up to you to choose. It is up to you to choose what kind of life do you want. People stay away from church and say, because I'm sick. But that woman, she went to church because she was sick. Jairus, she went to church. He went to church because his daughter was dying. He went to church because his daughter was dying. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit opens your eyes and see the treasures in the Bible. One question you need to ask yourself, who is Jesus to you? A lot of people say, I believe, I believe, I believe, but by your action, you can tell whether you believe or not. Faith is different from presumption. Faith does not come from the mind. Faith comes from the heart. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will ask you, are you in faith now? He will ask you. He had asked me before, are you in faith? I said, sorry, sorry, sir, I'm not. But I repent. I go back to faith. Thank you, Jesus. I ask you, was the woman in faith when she pressed? Of course she was. Was Jairus in faith when he went to see Jesus when his own daughter was dying? I mean, your flesh would say, let's just stay by her side. I mean, how, how can you help her? You can't help her staying by her side. So was Jairus in faith? Yes, of course. So one question you need to ask yourself, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Let's look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Whatever you haven't got is because you haven't believed. Whatever you haven't got is because you haven't believed. And you haven't believed because you thought that you have believed. <laughs> Amen. So that's why it's so important that transparency before God. It's so important that transparency, or you call it the sincerity. Amen. How many of you know that in, as far as our soul is concerned, our character is concerned, we are not perfect yet? Lift up your hands if you know. Amen. So don't be a perfectionist. Don't feel offended or don't feel ashamed when you've been caught you know, doing the wrong thing or thinking the wrong thing. It is a learning curve. Amen. We're all going from glory to glory. We're all growing from glory to glory. How can you have the same faith if you seldom hear the word? How can you have the same faith if you seldom hear the sermon? How can you have the same faith if you're not leading people to Christ and witnessing? We need to be transparent before God. We need to be transparent before God. Amen. We need to know where our faith is. You need to know where your faith level is and keep working and keep working and keep working. Aren't we supposed to be at rest? Yes, you are at rest. The Bible says, Paul, the apostle, even the apostle Paul, he said, I worked diligently to enter into the rest. He said, I worked diligently to enter into the rest. So is there a work? Yes, there is a work for God's people. What is that work? Build yourself up. 
Build yourself up. Build up your faith. Build up your faith. Build up your faith. Amen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Jesus saith unto them, But whom do you say that I am? And verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ. Whom do you say that I am? You need to answer that question. The Holy Spirit will ask you, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Peter answered by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the, by the, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, you are the Christ. The Christ, the Savior, the Healer. The deliverer. The one who meets all of our needs. The provider. The son of the living God. The manifestation of God on earth. God who is alive in our midst. Meeting all of our needs. You are the Christ. The savior. The anointed one. The deliverer, the healer, the provider, the son of the living God, the manifestation of heaven on earth, God alive in men, meeting all of our needs. You are the Christ. The reason why you're still doing drugs, the reason why some of you are still doing alcohol, the reason why some of you are still doing your own thing is because you don't see Jesus as the only need that you need in your life. That's why you're still trying and going everywhere to get your needs met. But you have only one need. You only have one need. You only have one need. And that need is Christ Jesus. You don't need healing when you have Jesus. You have healing. You don't need money when you have Jesus. You have money. You don't need drugs when you have Jesus. You have high. <laughs> you don't need alcohol when you have Jesus, you have joy. You're loosed from all your self inhibitions. You know, there are those that need to drink. Why? Because they're so inhibited. They're so self inhibited because they need to wear a mask in front of people. You know, we have to behave and do well. You know, then I talk too loud, then I dance. But then when they are drunk, they dance, they sing, they, they are loud and they're crazy. <laughs> Let go of all the pressure and inhibi inhibitions. Thank you, Jesus. We want to be all that God has made us to be. Excellent. Good. 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 Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, 19. When you have Jesus, you have no more depression. When you have Jesus, you have no more depression. I used to be the most depressed person in, in the world, <laughs> to me anyway. I was always depressed, always in tears. Everything was negative. But God set me free. Amen. Once you are delivered, you are delivered. Amen. De Jesus delivered you from everything. Everything the devil tries to play against you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. How many of you believe that? Lift up your hands. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Ask you, ask yourself, are you joyful? Are you joyful this morning? How many of us are joyful this morning? Lift up our hands. Yes, we're joyful. We're joyful. Why are we not joyful? We are a heavenly people. Amen. My life is so good, you know. You can spend time in, in prayer and just stand in the presence of God and say, Lord, I've been so blessed by you. And count, start counting all your blessings. Look for the good and you will find them. Look for the good and you will find them. Stop looking for the bad because you will find them too. <laughs> because life is progressive. You'll be progressively blessed and your, as your faith progressively grows. Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Until you go to heaven, then bum, 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 everything happens at once. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of us are on our way to, on our journey to heaven? Lift up our hands. How many of you know that you're on your journey to heaven? Lift up your hands. 
Amen. Heaven is so beautiful. How many of you love colors? Beautiful colors? When you go to heaven, there'll be colors that you've never seen on earth. How many of you love to watch the sunrise or the sunset? It's so beautiful. When you go to heaven, you'll be able to watch that. All the glory of God. So beautiful. The glory of God. How many of you want to watch glory? How many of you want to be surrounded by glory? Surrounded by glory. Surrounded by glory. Heaven is so beautiful. Don't miss heaven for anything. Heaven is so beautiful. And praise God, you can have heaven on earth in your world. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need. Lift up your hands and receive. Lift up your hands and receive. You know, the power of the Bible is when you read the Bible, it's like you're extracting. You're extracting all the vitamins and all the nutrition. It's like when you're, when you're eating a vitamin tablet. How many of you have had vitamin tablets before? When you eat the vitamin tablet, what happened? You're extracting what's inside because the capsules won't do you any good, right? It's what's on the inside, right? So you extract. The same when you read the Bible, amen? The same when you read the scriptures, your spirit extracts all the treasures in the scripture, in the word. It becomes spiritual power on the inside of you. That's why the Word of God says, God said in the book of Psalms, I send my Word and heal them. Because healing power is in the Word. Amen. So when you read this scripture, but my God, not your God, not her God, not his God. You have to make God your God. It has to be personal. It has to be personal. It has to be personal. God has to be personal to you. So you have to say, my God shall supply all my needs, all my needs according to his riches and glory. By whom? By Christ Jesus. So Jesus is our gateway to the blessings of God. Jesus is our gateway to the blessings of God. That's why you have to call upon Jesus and be saved. Saved from sickness and disease. Saved from poverty. Saved from all the bondages of this world. Saved from the corruptions of this world. Saved from all the traps and all the weapons and all the attacks of the enemy. So God is doing you a big favor, <laughs> a big favor by asking you to be saved. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Lift up your hands. Amen. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Lift up your hands. That God is doing you a big favor by asking you to be saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you read Philippians 4.19, you extract the power that is in this scripture. And it works for you. Amen. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people who know their God. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people who know their God. But the people that know their God shall be strong. How many of us want to be strong? How many of us want to be healthy? Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. You want to be strong. You want to be healthy. Lift up your hands. Now, you ask me, Pastor Dora, why are you asking us to lift up our hands all the time? Just leave me alone. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> because I have to challenge you. Because you need to have your acts of faith. I told you, it is the will of God to heal that woman with 12 years of bleeding. But until she took her act, until she put her act together and proactively followed, she would not be healed. So every time when you lift up your hands, you're partake of that promising. You're partaking of that promise. You're partaking of that promise. That's why I say to you, lift up your hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people that do know their God shall be strong. So how many of us want to be strong? Lift up our hands. 
We want to be strong. Don't wait till you're sick to lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and you won't be sick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I keep asking you, come on, acts of faith, acts of faith. When do you do that acts of faith? Right now. Lift up your hands as an act of faith. Amen. You haven't lifted up your hand to Pastor Dora. You're lifting up your hands so angels can see you. Angels can see you. Angels can see you. God can see you. God will say, you see my servant? You see my daughter? There. Her faith is working. Come on, angels. Go. Move in her life. Angels can read your mind. God can. But angels can read your mind. Even though God can read your mind, you need corresponding action. You need corresponding action. You need corresponding action. Amen. Two things. Christians, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. The Word of God says, open your mouth and He will fill it. So until you open, He won't fill it. <laughs> so open your mouth and the next thing is act. The whole book is called the act. The book of Acts. Say with me, the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. You need to renounce spiritual laziness. Rebuild that spiritual laziness. Rebuild that spiritual laziness. Don't just pray in your bed. You know, I've had people telling me, Pastor Dora, I pray in my bed and I fall asleep. Of course you fall asleep because you're praying in your bed. Come on, get up and pray. <laughs> Of course you fall asleep because when you pray, you pray, Oh, Father God, if you please. Yeah, okay, all right, good, thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> of course you fall asleep. Even God will fall asleep with that kind of prayer. <laughs> Some of you are sleepy all the time. Look at yourself. I mean, I can see everyone here from up here. Some of you look so sleepy all the time. God have mercy. And the Lord said to me, that's exactly how you look. He sees you like that. When God look at you, oh, they are so sleepy. Oh, no wonder they can't hear my voice. <laughs> Come on, say with me that the violin, <laughs> take it by force. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say, I'm alert. I'm alert. I'm alive. I'm alert. I'm full of energy. Do you know what is to be wise? What is to be clever? Full of energy. You know that sickness, dementia, right? What is dementia? A lack of oxygen in the mind, in the brain. And as a result, falling off. <laughs> they say that when you age, once you've passed the age of 40, that you just fall asleep. You'll just be dozing off uncontrollably all the time. <laughs> How many of you want that? How many of you don't want that? So you better be energetic. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you can see that I'm very energetic? <laughs> I have people come to me and say, I don't understand why you're always so energetic. Because of the Holy Ghost. Because of the Holy Ghost. What is youth? Youth is full of energy. So when the Bible says that He will renew your youth like the eagles, I understand the look and the face so that your face will not droop and your, face and your skin will not droop. But it's to replenish you with energy on the inside. Energy. 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 How many of us want energy? You have so much life in you. You have so much health in you. You have so much energy in you. You can't die. Praise God. You can die. Why? Because the devil tries to put you down, pipe will put you down. But then you keep moving and moving. And you get, the, you get the devil's tired, but you're not tired. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, the devil can be tired. But I'm not tired. The demons can be tired. <laughs> but I'm not tired. I'm full of energy. I'm full of the strength of the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The people that know, do know that God shall be strong and do exploits. So let me ask you, what kind of people will be strong and do exploits? Come on, somebody answer me. You've had the scripture. Know their God. So the knowledge of God is the key. The knowledge of God is the master key. 
It's the master key to health and healing. It's the master key to all sorts of life adventures. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, who is Jesus to you? Jesus is the one who can meet all of your needs. He's the Christ. Jesus is the one who can meet all your needs, whether it be physical needs, relational needs, financial needs. Jesus is the one who can meet all your needs. Amen. If you think that you are not clever enough, ask the Lord, come on, give me wisdom, Lord. I need wisdom. And he will give to you. The Bible says nothing good, nothing good will God withhold. Amen. From those that are called according to his purpose, those that love him. Nothing good. God will not withhold anything good from you. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, the book of Revelation. Come on, church, we need to start reading the book of Revelation because we are living in the end times. I tell you, life in the world is going to be very, very hard, very tough. Life in the world is going to be very, very tough because God has to prove to them that all their idols can't help you. Amen? Because you know who is going to take over? Who is going to take over this world? God is going to take over. The kingdom of Jesus is going to take over this world. Of course, the world has to go down because the kingdom of Jesus is taking over. So you better let go of your faith in the world. You better let go of your faith in the world. Or, I don't know how many of you have watched the movie Left Behind, or you'll be left behind. How many of you don't want to be left behind? Lift up your hands. Amen. You better not be left behind. You better know the voice of your shepherd. You better hear the trumpet call. Amen. How did John hear the trumpet call? He was in the spirit. Now, if you've missed the Friday night Bible study, make sure you get it online. Make sure you listen to it online. Friday night, I've been teaching on how to hear the voice of God, to receive the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Honestly, I don't think that you can survive on just one sermon a week. You need to hear the word. You need to hear the sermon. Amen? Because God has given your pastor what is important for you to feed on. Amen? You need to feed on what God, the revelation that God has given to your pastor. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Can we say amen? So you can go online for that. But of course, it's a lot better if you partake Friday night of the blessing in the congregation. Amen? So Jesus is the Christ. He is whatever we need him to be at that moment. He's the healer. He's the provider. He is the deliverer. He is the savior. Amen. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Jesus is power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. How many of you want that? How many of you want power, riches, wisdom, Strength, honor, glory, blessing. Now, the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. The word ordered means orchestrated. That means I follow the plan of God as I follow, as I flow with the plan of God. I am walking in his path. It's not my path because the Lord is my shepherd. And when I commit myself to follow him, when I commit myself to follow him, then he orchestrates my path, my journey. Amen. That's why I fear no evil. Because in the path of God, how can there be any evil? Amen. But if you're not following the path of God, you follow your own agenda, you follow your own plan, you follow your own schemes, then you're on a detour. And you're on a detour, what happens is that you will hit the wall, and then you will understand, oh, sorry, I've missed you, Lord. But how many of us don't want to go on a detour? How many of us don't want to to go on a detour? How many of us don't want to live by regrets? Lift up your hands. If you don't want to live by regrets, lift up your hands. Amen? I praise God that he is the healer, but for me, I don't want to get sick. I praise God that he is the deliverer, but praise the Lord, I don't want to fall into a pit and has to be delivered. There is such a powerful thing, it's called preservation. God can preserve you. He can preserve you. He can preserve you. I know that McDonald's uses a lot of preservative, right? 
And that's why the food won't go moldy. All right? <laughs> but God is the greatest preservative. <laughs> and his preservative has no side effects. <laughs> Amen? How many of you want to have his preservative for your life? Lift up your hands. Amen. I want God's preservative over me, over my life, over my children, over everything I do, over everything that I have. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So that is who Jesus is to me. He's my preserver. Amen. He's the preserver. Amen. He's my preserver of all that is good. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. If you look at this list, there's no money that can buy you power, no money that can buy you riches, no money that can buy you wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Whatever you can buy with money is very cheap. All these heavenly forces, no money can buy. And that's why it's very foolish of us to set our mind on the natural. It is very foolish of us to set our mind on the world. You need to set your mind on Christ, on Jesus. He has all that you need, over and above all that you can ask or think. Amen. That's Jesus. You need to ask yourself, who is Jesus to me? Because Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered that. Peter answered that. Peter answered that by revelation. He said, you are the Christ. And because of that revelation, he was persecuted. The devil persecuted him when Jesus was arrested. He denied Jesus three times under that pressure. Under that pressure. You know, there'll be pressure. The enemy will put pressure on you to deny Christ. To deny that Christ is the one that can meet all your needs. The pressure to go to the world. The pressure to go to someone else. The pressure to escape. The pressure to go to something. That's what Peter experienced. But Jesus saw Peter. And Jesus warned him. The Holy Ghost had warned him. Jesus said to him, when you are strong, strengthen your brothers. So the prophecy had stopped the enemy from continual harassment against Peter. The word of God is very important. We must have the voice of Jesus. We must have the rhema word. Jesus said, the enemy, the devil, would like to shift you as wheat, but I pray for you that your faith does not fail. You need to guard your faith. You need to guard your faith jealously. Guard your faith jealously. Guard your faith no matter what happens. Don't let the enemy tear you apart from your faith. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And let me ask you, did Peter make it? Did Peter make it? Yes. Did he become a very powerful person? Yes. Did he move in signs and wonders and miracles? Yes. Hallelujah. God's rewards are sure. You may not see it right away. Don't miss it because you don't see it right away. Don't miss it because you don't see it today, because you don't see it tomorrow. Faith has tenacity. It's like you can be stretched. You can be stretched. And the greater you, you be stretched, the greater is your faith. There's a difference between belief and trust. Belief is right now, I believe. Trust is I trust. Even though I go through, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I trust. There is strength in trust. There's power in trust. That's what a beautiful marriage is made up of, trust. That's what beautiful friendship is made up of, trust. The Bible says God has promised that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So what is truly valuable, what is truly victorious, is what that cannot be shaken. Can we say amen? Amen. Because you are, your faith is more precious than gold. So you have to go through that refining. 
You have to go through that refining because your faith is more precious than gold. You are the people that are going to heaven. You talk to non-Christians. Going to heaven is very hard. You go, you, you go talk to those that keep knocking on the door, you know, <laughs> and, and I share with the person and I chase after him because he said, I can't go to heaven. I chased after him outside my house. I said, if you can't go to heaven, why are you believing what you're believing? For some, for the, unre- for the religious people, going to heaven is very hard. But for us, going to, to heaven is God's grace. For us, going to heaven is God's grace. Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? It's by grace. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Go with me to Mark chapter 3, verse 10. Mark chapter 3, verse 10. For Jesus had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues or sicknesses. And then if you look at Luke chapter 5, verse 1, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, Luke chapter 5, verse 1, and then go back to Mark chapter 5, verse 24, and Jesus went with them, and much people followed him and thronged him or crowded him. Why were they all following Jesus? Why would they give up their lunch, give up their dinner, give up their family gatherings, and all follow Jesus? Number one, in those days, they did not have advanced technology. Now we're living in a very different generation. I mean, the devil has made his way to to get the people to believe in technology, to believe in medicine, than to believe in God. In those days, they did not have that much technology, and they were desperate. They were desperate. You have to see what desperate people will do. And number two, Because Jesus met all their needs. People follow Jesus for a reason. Not because they want to be great Christians. Not because they want to go to heaven. Heaven is just too remote for them. You know, not everybody can believe in heaven. They say they believe it. They sing, but they don't. Even some pastors don't believe in heaven. So the reason why they pressed The reason why they followed, the reason why they chased after, the reason why they would even use the boat and cross the river and followed all the way is because they were desperate. They were desperate and they knew that Jesus could meet all their needs. So this God that we believe in has to be practical. So your Jesus has to be practical. It's not theology. It's not religion. So that means when you believe in Jesus, you shall definitely see results in your life. How many of you know that in the business world, it's not how sweet you talk. It's the results you generate. It's very practical, right? Results. The business world revolves around results. I mean, business, results, money, results. And if you look at Jesus, the reason why he has drawn the crowd is because he gives results. So we need to ask our faith, ask ourselves, is your faith generating results? If it has not, if it has never, then you better go back and start building your faith. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus generated, gave results. And then he continued... And he gave the power to demonstrate results to his church. He said, in my name, you cast out devils. In my name, you heal the sick. Didn't he say that? 
So are we supposed to generate results? Church, are we supposed to generate results? Should we rest if we don't see results? No. Should we be lazy if we don't see results? No. It has to be your heart cry. It is your desire to see God manifesting results in your life. Can we say amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When you see your needs met by Jesus in the gospel, when you read Philippians chapter 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit will speak that scripture to you. But my God shall supply all your needs by his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then you wake up. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Glory. Ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see your needs met in that scripture. You see your needs met by Jesus. You see your needs met by Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Have I seen my needs met? Yes, many times. I was so sick. God healed me. I had terrible migraine headache. God healed me. I had terrible chest pain. God healed me. I was very poor. God provided for me. I was full plagued by inferiority. God delivered me. Amen. With my eyes, I have seen my needs met. Amen. According to his riches and glory. So you need to see Jesus exalted in glory. When you see Jesus exalted in glory, see Jesus exalted in glory, see Jesus exalted in glory and riches, and your needs met, and your needs met, and your needs met. But if you see Jesus just a little baby in the manger, if you see Jesus is always stuck in the Bible, if you see Jesus is just a religious figure, then you don't see his riches and glory. You don't see his demonstration. You don't see his acts. Then you won't lay hold of his manifestations because manifestations come when he's moving when he's moving when he's moving when he's moving then the manifestations come so you need to move with the word you need to move with the word you need to be moved by the word can we say amen, amen. for some people the reason why they can't see jesus as their christ as the one who meet all their needs is because they think it's too hard it's too hard it's impossible i'm stuck I have no way, and I need to rush. I need to pay my bills. It's too hard. I'm suffering. Well, the, the Word of God says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? And Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Remember David. He saw Goliath defeated. But only David could see that. The rest of the Israelites, they saw Goliath as a giant and they grasshoppers. So to the extent you magnify your problem, it's the extent that you magnify your weakness. The extent you magnify your problem, well, even before the enemy did anything, you already magnified that they could do so much. You were so scared, you were so afraid, and your words, your words were full of the enemy's power, full of the enemy's might, full of what the enemy could do. And before the enemy even did anything, you were already paralyzed. No wonder God was not pleased. We need to understand that we don't shrink God and magnify the devil. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? You get what you believe in. You believe in the devil, you will get the devil. You believe in God, you will get, the, you will get God. You believe in victory, you will get victory. You believe in defeat, you will get defeat. And faith is not presumption. Faith is guided by the Holy Spirit. Faith is as you hear the Holy Spirit, as you hear the Holy Ghost, as you hear the Holy Spirit, as you hear the Holy Ghost, I move as I am led. Can we say amen? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Luke 18, verse 27. Luke 18, verse 27. Hallelujah. Don't underestimate the power of scriptures. 
Don't underestimate the power of the Word of God. You know, T.L. Osborn, how many of you have heard of T.L. Osborn? Powerful evangelist, you know, in his ministry, a lot of people got saved, a lot of people got healed. We're talking about millions, all right? His, his, his ministry was so big. He preached one powerful sermon called The Unlimited God based on just this scripture. And there were so many healings, so many deliverance, so many salvations, just based on one scripture. And this scripture is Luke chapter 18, verse 27. And Jesus said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Don't just keep looking at people, 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 what they can do, what they can do, what they haven't done, what they can do. You cannot be looking at God if you're just looking at people. I remember when I brought up my children, you know, they are not little kids anymore. My son is already 25 and my daughter 23. I remember when I brought them up with the Word of God, with prayer. There were times I had to deliberately walk away from them because they were sick. They would have fever or headache or throwing up, but I prayed, I believed, I trusted but then the devil would say to me, you're not a good mother. How come you're not staying by their side? You're not a good mother. How come you tell them to go to school? But I knew, and I knew that I could not help them, not until I used my faith. And I brought up my children for 20 years with no medication, but just the word of God. No medication, but just the word of God. And I want you to understand the struggle that I had gone through. When I, did, when I was determined to believe and not be moved by emotions. Your decision should not be an emotional one. Your decision should be a spiritual one. What helps your children is not your emotions. What helps your children, not your presumptions, but your faith. Your faith. Your faith will release the power of God and there'll be an anointing that comes to your family. The angels would be released around your household. I remember when Sonny was away, we were living in Mansfield at that time. We, we rented a house and in front of our house was like a, a garden and I was very wrong because the reason why I chose that house was I like the garden, you know, it's so close so you can go to a public park. I was so naive. I did not know that those were the places that the outlaws would go to at night to do drugs. <laughs> so not long after we had moved there, and when Sunny was away, well, I, I was with my two kids. They were still very little. And uh, suddenly we heard a lot of um, motorbikes, you know. <laughs> and then we started to hear people talking and swearing and cursing. And my heart started to jump. You know, I got so, so fearful. I got so fearful. I did not know what to do. I mean, I was pacing the floor and my kids were in bed and uh, I could hear them swearing and I knew what kind of people they were. And uh, praise God for the Holy Spirit. He speaks, the Holy Ghost speaks. Amen? So the Holy Ghost said to me to pray, pray in the Spirit. So I started praying in the Spirit and I started praying in the Spirit. And that's why the Word of God, pray in the Spirit and pray with your understanding, sing with the Spirit and sing with your understanding because all prayers come from the Holy Spirit. So I prayed in the Holy Spirit and I prayed in the Holy Spirit and then the Word came to me and said to me, bind the spirit of outlaws. Bind the spirit of outlaws. So that's what I did. I said, I bind the spirit of outlaws. I bind the spirit of outlaws. I bind the spirit of outlaws. So I just pray that and pray in tongues and bind the spirit of our loss. And when I did that, you know, fear just left me. When I, when I did that, I was not scared anymore. And peace came out over me. And, um, and I have to tell you before, like they were throwing cans because they were drinking beer and, or whatever. You know, they were throwing everything everywhere. And then I, and I, and I pray and I kept praying in the spirit. And the next thing that I heard, they were swearing. They were swearing like louder and greater than before. So you must not be intimidated. Sometimes when you pray, it seems like it's getting worse, but it's not. It's because they were reacting, because it's working. And so they were swearing and cursing. And the next minute, I, I started to hear, you know, beer cans thrown to the window. And then the next minute, I heard clong, clong motorbikes, you know, moving. And then they were gone. And gone in the sense that they did not come back anymore. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Amen. God is real. 
What he could do for you is a lot greater than what the police could do for you. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so real. He is the Christ. He is the Christ. He is the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So the things which are impossible with men. It was not possible for me, like a woman, to fight against the gangsters. You must be joking. You know, what's impossible with men is possible with God. What is impossible with men, the doctors may say that it's a terminal case. There's no hope. What is impossible with men is possible with God. What is impossible with men is possible with God. So don't let, don't let your carnal reasoning, your worldly reasoning, your human reasoning stop you from believing. Faith is very, very precious. It's more valuable than gold. Faith is more valuable than gold. With faith, you can get all things. Because Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. So when you have faith, you have all things. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So why some people don't believe? Another reason why people don't believe is because they think they're not good enough. There's a difference between Christianity and Buddhism. Whoa, it's almost 12. <laughs> There's a difference between Christianity and Buddhism. Buddhism is, well, you need to do your best. Your character has to be perfect. Stop being violent. Think of peace. Stop wanting money. Want to be a beggar. Stop wanting to get married. Go to be a nun, to be a monk. Purify yourself. Purify yourself. Be revine. Because how can a mortal climb all the way up to be a saint? That's, that's Buddhism. That's religion. Religion is God is so big. We are so little. God is so mighty. We are so weak. That's religion. Religion has no grace. Religion is based on your effort, based on your determination. That's why I failed terribly. But Christianity is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christianity is about redemption. Christianity is about Jesus coming on the inside of you. It's about God igniting you. It's about the glory coming on the inside. Christianity is about justification. It's about believing God. It's about glorification. Christianity is about grace. It's about grace. It's about grace. The law tells you how bad you are, but grace tells you how good you can be. Can we say amen? So do you want to be bad or do you want to be good? How many of you want to be good? Lift up your hands. If you want to be good, then receive grace. If you want to be good, then receive grace. When we talk about good, we're not talking about being perfect. We are talking about being good on the inside. You desire good, you want to be good, and everything around you will manifest from that goodness that has been deposited on the inside of you. So because you're good on the inside, because you've been made good on the inside, everything that you do is good. Amen? Your intention becomes good. Amen? Everything that you use becomes good. The goodness is transferred. Amen? Your words become good. Your thoughts become good. Your emotions become good. Can we say amen? Amen? So don't, don't come in and say, well, they are Christian. You know, they are Christians. They are supposed to be good. God doesn't operate like that. God doesn't operate by they are supposed to be, they are supposed to be. God operates by they are, they are, they are, they are, they are. Calling those things that be not as though they were. Amen. So when you call yourself good, guess what? You'll be good. When you think yourself good, guess what? You'll be good. When you see others good, guess what? They will be good, at least to you. <laughs> they may be a monster to someone else, but they'll be good to you. Why? Because when they come into your world, they will change. Because you have the power to change everything around you. Because love, the love of God is indefeatable. Can we say amen? Indefeatable. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that once you've become a Christian, you get on a one-way street. You know, we've sung that song, One Way, Jesus, right? We've sung that song. It's a one way. What I'm saying is there's no return. There's no return. Why? Because the glory is so strong in you. You're attracted to the glory. You're drawn to the glory. And you won't turn back. You won't turn back. Because when you turn back, you'll be frozen. Become a pillar of salt. The glory will keep drawing you and keep attracting you all the way until you reach heaven. How many of you understand that? All the way, all the way. It's a one-way street with no return. You're not returning to the world. You're not returning to your past. You have no return. So let go of all of your past. Let go of all of your past. Cut it off, cut it off, cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. Can we say amen? And receive all the glory to move forward. All the glory. Amen. All the glory to move forward. All the glory to move forward. Amen. We need, you know why we need signs and wonders and miracles? How many of us want signs and wonders and miracles in our life? The word miracles simply means the acts of God. Whatever God does is a miracle. How many of you know that your salvation is a miracle? Do you know, don't you know that your salvation is a miracle? For who could... Who could have persuaded you to come to church? I mean, if it's not a miracle, you would be sit here thinking, it was so boring. Your salvation is a miracle. The fact that you're listening to me is a miracle. The conception of Jesus is a miracle. The life of Jesus is a miracle. Amen. The works of God is a miracle. Heaven is a miracle. Everything that is abnormal to this world is a miracle. Amen. And do you know why God wants miracles on earth? You don't have to beg God for a miracle. You don't have to beg God, please, please, please. God wants miracles. Because miracles are to prove that God is alive. Miracles are to prove that God is alive. That He's alive in the midst of His people. It's to prove that Jesus is Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. I know that there is now a lot of people that don't believe in miracles. I know that a lot of people no longer believe in healing. A lot of people no longer believe in God's uh, provision. They believe in technology, believe in doctors, believe in medicine, believe in your work, believe in you know, everything that is of the world. But I want to be in the face of Jesus, the voice that contends for the miracles of God on earth. Can we say amen? Amen. You want to be one of those that say, I believe in miracles. I'm contending with my faith for miracles. I want to see miracles in my life. I want to see miracles in my church. I want to see miracles in my family. I want to see miracles. I want to see miracles. I want to see miracles. And God will cheer you on. And God will cheer you on. And he will say, all the way, all the way. Come on. All the way, all the way, all the way. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. God loves us so much. He wants to demonstrate His power in our life. That's why He sent us the Holy Spirit. Amen? As I said, all your needs are met. There is only one need. There is only one need. The need is Christ. When you have that one need, all your other needs are met. All your other needs are met. Amen? So go back to the question. Whom do you say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? So now we go back to Peter's answer. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Matthew 16, verse 16. When Peter could see who Jesus is, the power comes. The anointing comes. The grace comes. Amen? Your eyes are blessed to see that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Savior, the Deliverer, the Healer, the Provider, the Son of the Living God, the manifestations of God on earth. You are God alive in the midst of men. You are God meeting all of our needs. And Jesus answered in verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed. The word blessed means you have the power to prosper. Lift up your hands and be blessed. The word blessed means to receive the power to prosper. Spirit and soul and body. That means even when a lot of pressure comes against you, you won't crumble. 
you still be able to stand strong. Even in the midst of provocation, you stand calm. Even when fears roar against you, you stay in faith. And when everything seems to tumble, you hold on to the hope that never fails. That's blessed. Spirit, soul, and body prospering. Jesus said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you. It does not come from your education, does not come from your intellect, does not come from men, but my Father which is in heaven. So that means Peter received the touch from the Father. I want to read to you from the message translation. Message, because this is so powerful. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Uh, from the message, okay? I'm reading to you from the message. Jesus came back. God bless you, Simon, son of Jonah. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in heaven, God himself, let you in on this secret of who I really am. Let you in on this secret. Let you in on this secret of who I really am. And now I'm going to tell you who you really are. You are Peter, a rock. This is the rock on which I will put together my church. A church so expensive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. So it's not, it's not you afraid of the enemy. It's the enemy afraid of you retreating, retreating before you. The devils will retreat before you. That's how you expand. That's how you expand your world. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You need to see yourself powerful. Powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Victorious. Continue with this. This is the, this is the treasure. And that's not all. This is Jesus speaking. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. No more barriers. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. That means heaven will completely and totally back you up in all things. Hallelujah. That means Jesus has given you a blank check. Based on what? The revelation that he is the Christ. Based on what? The revelation he is the Christ. He is the Christ. A blank check from God. Why do we need this blank check? Because we are his ambassadors. You are not here to live a selfish life. You are not here to just live a selfish life. You are not here to live a self-centered life. You are here to live unto God. This precious promise is for everyone who lives unto God. That's what a Christian means. That God becomes so powerful in you that you have adopted His name. That's why you are a Christian. That you have adopted the name of Jesus. The Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And you are a son, you are a daughter, you are a child. It does not come cheap. It's not for your selfish ambition. It's not for what you want. It's for what God wants you to have. It's for God's calling on your life. It's for God's destiny for you. It's for you to lit up the world. It's for you to show off God to your community. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing that you need to repent from, it's to repent from any selfish ambition and vanity. Repent from living a selfish life. Let go of your natural life so that you may have the life of Christ. Let go of your natural life so that you may have the supernatural life. Let go of this earthly life that you may have the heavenly life. It's no longer I live. It's no longer I that live, but Jesus who is living in me. The one who multiplied the bread and the fish. 
The one who had prayer, every prayer answered. The one who healed the sick and raised the dead. The one who is now seated at the right hand of God. Jesus. Jesus. The unconditional love of God. The one who changed the desert into a, a living water. Living water. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I let go of what is earthly. I let go of what is selfish. I let go of what's self-centered. I let go of what is rotten. I let go of what is destructive. I let go of what is corruptible for heaven, for the incorruptible, for the heavenly. Amen. For the holy, for the good, for the pure. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands if that's the desire of your heart that you let go you let go, that you can see clearly enough now to let go, that you can see clearly to let go, so the devil cannot have any foothold on your life anymore. Amen. He cannot touch you because you have become a holy child of God, a saint of God. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, the evil one touches me not. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.